guys what is up man welcome back to the channel my name is tim and i go by hotshot mac if you're new to this channel in this video we're going to talk about the basics of hours of service i'm going to do some screen recording and show you guys what my eld looks like but i've been on the road for four months kind of figured out a way where i can use this to the best of my ability i can maximize my drive time and i can get the most out of my time while on the road We're gonna jump right into the video. You know, everyone operates differently. This is just the basics of how it works. And then you guys can, you know, also do other research and see what works best for you. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Let's look right at my screen. I'm gonna screen record here and we'll get started. So the first thing that I see when I sign into my app after being on a reset is my vehicle information, which is Tim McCaw. Within that, it has the truck and so forth. And then my shipping ID. My shipping ID, I try to keep that updated every time I get a Raycon and I have a load on my trailer, I put in the shipping ID that matches that load. I'm just gonna walk you guys through the steps of what my day looks like. And then I'll kind of explain some things uh, to you guys. So the first thing we see is off duty. Of course, that's anything that I'm doing where I'm not on duty. Sleeper berth, I do not use sleeper berth. That is not, we don't do that in Hot Shot, I don't believe, at least I don't do it. On duty time, that's anything I'm doing while I'm on duty within my shift. Driving time, of course, is any time we're driving. And personal conveyance is anything that you're doing outside of being on your shift or being on duty. If there's any personal driving that you have to do, you use personal conveyance. Let's say you run out of time in a day, right? You run out of your, you dri you've driven out your 11 hour shift. You pull into a truck stop, there's no parking for you at that truck stop. What you have to do is use personal conveyance to get to the closest, the safest place for you to park. I only do a max of an hour of personal conveyance. I've never really had to use an hour. You don't want this to look suspicious, guys, um, and especially if you're going in the direction of where your drop-off is or your pickup. It's just too suspicious. DOT can get you for that. So I try not to, man. I try to look for the closest place that I can park, the safest place that I can park to end my shift. Also, when I'm off duty, I'm home and I'm driving driving around town, I'm logged off and I use personal conveyance anytime I need to get around. Let's talk about hours of service for a little bit. First, every week you get 70 hours within a cycle, okay? So every eight days, I believe it's eight days, you have 70 hours. The way I choose to operate is from Monday to Saturday for instance. So I start my shift usually on a Monday morning and I end my week usually on a Saturday evening, all right? So within that 70 hours, you get 11 hours a day to drive. Every day you have a 14 hour shift. Now out of that 14 hour shift, three hours is your on duty time, meaning loading, unloading, waiting, anything that you do after you've started your day. So remember, once you start the first thing in the morning, which is your pre-trip, that 14 hour shift starts to tick. So the next thing is your eight hour until break time. So every eight hours you need to be Now, let me explain how this break can work out. You can either be on duty, loading, unloading, waiting, anything that you're doing on duty where you're not driving, where that vehicle is not in drive for at least 30 minutes and your ELD has picked up that you've went into on duty or off duty for 30 minutes, that counts as your break. Now, my recommendation is not to do this within the first three hours because if you do it within the first three hours, you're gonna still have more than eight hours left to drive. So at least wait your three hours so that once you take your break, you don't have to take another break within that shift because that's gonna affect you maximizing your time for the day. So again, just to recap, I can be at a shipping location, getting loaded, getting strapped, getting tarped, and if that takes me an hour, there goes my 30 minute break. My time has now reset for my eight hour break. That's that guys for the break, drive time, shift time, and cycle time. So the resets that you do have to do when you're operating is a 10 hour reset at every day you operated and a 34 hour reset at the end of 70 hours. When I end my shift on a Saturday, I'm doing my 34 hour reset. So after you've completed that 70 hour cycle, it doesn't matter when in the week this is, you have to have a 34 hour reset 
where you are off the road, you are off duty, you're not doing any work, and you're pretty much taking that time to rest and reset to get back for another 70 hour week. So keep that in mind, guys, that you have to do a 34 hour reset. You can do a recap, which is running eight hours and 45 minutes every day, and you can just keep going. I don't personally know anyone that operates that way, but I know it's an option. If that's something you choose to do, you can look into the recap option, but I do a 34 hour reset. I usually start that reset on a Saturday evening, say around between six and 8 p.m. And then by Monday morning, say four or five, six o'clock, I'm you know, heading to my first either drop if I had a weekend run, or I'm looking to be at my pickup at seven or eight o'clock Monday morning, and that's when I start my week. All right, let me give you guys some examples. Right now, I've been off duty for 19 hours and almost 19 and a half hours. Unfortunately, I should be on the road by now, but I'm waiting for my fuel card uh, that I misplaced. Um, I do have a load on my trailer. I'm still home in Houston, um, but you know, if I left without my fuel card, I plan to be out for like a month and I'd just be losing my discounts and it's kind of hard to get that mail to me while I'm out on the road. So let me show you guys a little example of what I did yesterday. This is what my day looks like yesterday in my log. All right, so I started my shift late yesterday uh, because I wasn't planning on getting on the road till today, which is Tuesday. And um, I started at 4.30. I went and picked up my trailer at the storage where I have it parked and because I was not loaded, I wasn't on duty. My drive from the house to the storage counts as personal conveyance. I don't know why the ELD didn't pick that up, but usually it does. Sometimes it's a little lagged. So you'll see here where it would say personal conveyance for that drive time. So the first thing I did was I went on duty. I did my pre-trip. You want to do your pre-trip for at least 15 minutes, guys. Then once I went off my pre-trip, I did 50 minutes. I went in the drive. My ELD picked it up. And then I drove for 38 minutes and got to my shipping location and I was there for 51 minutes getting loaded. On this application, it requires me to do a remark, which is kind of like a note. So it shows here loading, pre-trip inspection and, you know, break, things like that. I always do that to keep track of, you know, what my day is like, what I'm doing. The company that I'm leased on to also requires that. It's not a big deal for me, man. If I pull up to a fuel station, I grab my phone, I go on duty and I just put fuel and it, it's really not a big deal. I don't think a lot of, oh, a lot of people with their own authority have to worry about that. I don't think it's a requirement, but it, it's just what the company requires. So I, so I do it. The other thing I do in my pre-trip inspection is, and I'll try to maybe screen record it when I'm actually doing a pre-trip and include it in the video is I walk around and I take photos of my vehicle and my trailer. Um, it's for the company as well. They want to have another set of eyes on the, on the truck to see maybe I missed something, a defect or whatever it is. Okay. Real quick uh, with the pre-trip, um, what you're pretty much doing with the pre-trip guys is you want to make sure everything is, uh, you know, capable and safe to drive with your setup. So you're checking your indicators, your lights, your horn, your uh, you know trailer brake system, making sure everything is charged, your tire pressure, your lighting on the trailer, uh, your oil, your fluids. Um, you want to check all the levels, pretty much everything to keep you safe on the road and you know keep you operating safely out on the road. So that's kind of like a quick brief on pre-trip. I might do a video later on just kind of showing what I do for my pre-trip as a hotshot driver. I know I've been trying to find some videos on that. When I started, I wasn't really able to find much. So do your due diligence. Like I said, I might put a video out there and you know show that. So stay tuned for that, guys. So some of the ways I maximize my time, guys, I'm always driving out my clock if I can. I, I try not to drive too late into the night sometimes because when you stop late, it's just hard to find parking in a truck stop. Makes things a little bit more difficult, but it's not the easiest thing to do when you, you, you can't control you know how quick you're going to get loaded. You can't control how long you're going to wait to get loaded and things like that or even unloaded. So sometimes it may throw you off. It's best to start your shift as early as you can and then end your shift as early as you can. Um, you know, I try I'm trying to kind of manage that as well, just so you can maximize your day. When I stop to get fuel, man, I'm not really ashamed of saying this. You know, I, I pull up to the fuel. I don't go inside and use the use the restroom. I pee in a bottle and I keep it moving once it's fueled up and I'm rolling. But anyways, driving out my shift, uh, maximizing those 11 hours, sometimes, you know, you just have to push it because that one or two hour extra that you're leaving on your clock, you're gonna now have to drive 
you're losing that time pretty much. So that's just the way how I, I, I maximize it. I try not to make too many stops where I'm going inside in the mornings. Right when my 10 hour shift is up, I am back on the road. As you guys get out there though, man, you'll find different ways and what works for you. I'm still trying to find what works best and, and just what, whatever is gonna maximize your time because of course, Every time that you lose, it adds up and you could be picking up a load. You could be adding another load to your week. So just finding out those ways that you can maximize your time is a plus. But like I said, this was just a basic rundown of, you know, hours of service and operating for non-CDL drivers. Keep in mind, guys, a lot of there's a lot of misconception out there where non-CDL drivers do not have to run an ELD. You do need to run an ELD for hotshot guys, for non-CDL operators, for uh, CDL operators, make sure you have an electronic logging device on hand, um, not a paper log. I do keep a paper log on hand just in case of any malfunction. You can pick those up at any truck stop guys, so make sure you have that in your truck as well, along with all your other uh, in-cab paperwork that you need. I think that takes care of the majority guys of this video and the basics of hours of service when operating as a non-CDL operator or a CDL operator doing hot shot. If there's anything that I miss, you guys just drop them in the comments. If you have questions, drop them in the comments. I'm trying to get back to these comments as quickly as possible. But I hope this video kind of helps out guys and, and shed some ideas on what hours of service looks like for a non-CDL hotshot driver. I appreciate you guys tuning in and if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Follow me on Instagram, hotshot underscore Mac with two C's. And thanks for watching guys. I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.